Agora nós teremos aqui a, pre, a apresentação da Qualcomm, e para fazer essa apresentação convidaremos Margaret Peg Johnson, vice-presidente executiva para Américas e Índia. Uh, Margaret, please. Look at the world, about 6 billion people in the world. Half of them now have cell phones. Half of the world has cell phones. I remember when I was first coming to Brazil and we were talking about the first billion. Now we're over 3 billion. And of that, only a little over a billion have TVs. And of that, only about half a billion have pay TV. So you can see that the device, the cell phone device, is an interesting device that's growing much more faster than you'll see with the other devices, and something that we believe is setting the stage for convergence. So if you look at the three devices in many people's life, PC, TV, and the cell phone, we want all the data that we have on each of those devices to go with us. Well, the only one of those three uh, that can go with us is the cell phone. So we believe that convergence, true convergence of those devices, most likely will take place first on the cell phone, being that half, half the world is carrying a cell phone today. And it's not just us who think that there's a good opportunity for mobile TV. Three different analysts are saying that in the next three years, we'll have probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 million subscribers for mobile TV. Today we have somewhere between 20, 25 to 50 million, it matters how you count it. But in just three years, there's a huge opportunity. Some of the things that can accelerate that opportunity or in fact impede that opportunity is the spectrum environment. So the, around the world, clearly, there's different, uh, there's different environments for spectrum and regulatory issues. But if we look at, if we could harmonize, what would that do to a service like mobile TV? We would have much cheaper network deployment if we could be in the same band. Devices would be much cheaper. We wouldn't have to manage, as we do today in many of our cell phones, different bands at different frequencies. And then the whole user experience would be better. You could cross a border and not worry about dropping your mobile TV service. So a lot of this is being driven in general by the digitization of the world, and specifically here in Brazil, with the DTV transition and the 3G transition ongoing, and people becoming more aware of services, there's an opportunity to take advantage of the spectrum that's involved in the digital divide. So as analog TV turns off and goes to digital TV, there's a fair amount of spectrum the world over that will be freed up for many, many services, but one that we think would be interesting is mobile TV. We did this in the United States. Uh, a few years ago, Qualcomm went and bought Channel 55 through an FCC auction. We have it now nationwide, and we have launched the largest uh, on a population basis, mobile TV system in the world today. We're in 50 cities, and this is ahead of our digital transition. Our digital transition doesn't occur until February of 2009. So we now have 50 cities up and operating, and both Verizon and AT&T have launched. So we have handsets of all flavors. We have UMTS as well as CDMA 2000 handsets in all different tiers. So a great opportunity because between those two operators, we have about 130 million subscribers. So it's something we've just started in the last year and a half, and AT&T has just launched, but we have quite a bit of opportunity ahead of us. If you look at the spectrum that becomes available, generally it's somewhere in the neighborhood of six megahertz per analog channel. And in what previously used to reside just one TV channel in the analog world, we're now putting in 20 digital channels and sending them out to cell phones. It's very nice quality, QVGA, 30 frames, or 30 frames per second, which means you can watch Formula One and football and have it be a very good experience. The, the, the cars actually zip around and you, you don't see any degradation of the, of the video signal. We also have 10 audio channels that can be run on the system, as well as interactive services. 
So if you think of this as a big one-way pipe right into the handset, you can take a lot of the linear TV and interact it with things that are coming in on the 3G pipe. So one is a broadcast pipe, it's going one way, and the 3G pipe is a two-way pipe. So it introduces the concept of interactivity, which we're also launching in the United States. Um, it's something that are, I think there's a whole new variety of services that will come between mixing those two pipes in a handset. Some of the devices that we're offering um, between AT&T and Verizon, you can see here, they're in all different tiers from low to high. Uh, some of the screens are small compared to some of them that are much larger. There's uh, definitely the ability to put more memory on a higher end phone and to make the phones in every shape, size, and color. So something interesting that goes on in the mobile world that is different from the PC world and the TV world is these devices iterate and change much more quickly. So as we bring up new services or new uh, uh, features to add to the handsets, we have many, many manufacturers who are making these devices who iterate and put that feature into the handset very quickly. So you'll see a lot of change, uh, even in, in a year from now, these devices will look different. And a lot of, of good opportunity, again, for everybody in the value chain that we've been talking about so much this morning. And one of the things we looked at is if you look at how do people watch TV, and this is a sample of some data from the United Kingdom, and this is just their standard TV that they send into your living room. People generally watch the same channels, or, or, or at least a number of people watch the same channels. So if you say, how can I take that experience into my living room and, and with only one six megahertz pipe, can it be done? So what we have developed is a model where we will send in somewhere up to 20 channels of the most watched TV, and then everything else can come in on demand on the 3G pipe. So you actually can mix together broadcast and unicast TV. An interesting example of something that's going on in Japan is the fact that they already have free TV in many of their handsets. But coming soon in 2011 and 2012, you can see that a large amount of spectrum will be freed up. 60 megahertz and 70 megahertz in the UHF and VHF band. But they already have free TV. There's an opportunity here for pay TV on the handset. We did a quick study, and it seems that people are willing to pay, just as we are in our living rooms, for, for TV, for certain content, for compelling content. They want the same things people want everywhere, news, sports, things like that, and they're willing to pay for it. We found in Japan they were willing to pay for 10 channels of pay TV, about $8 US. Again, a great opportunity here. This is a model that can be used. Uh, we do something similar in the US, but certainly it can be used everywhere, um, where content providers sell their rights into an entity. And this entity could be a broadcaster, it could be a telecom provider, it could be a mix of the two. They transmit that data out just on standard TV tower signals to the handset, but that return pipe that's already there helps benefit that chain, you already have a billing system, you have customer support, you have a way to charge. So this model is something we think that could be very, uh, very a, a recipe that can be duplicated in several places. And then lastly, if you look at, I, I, I opened up with harmonization of spectrum, and if we could, in a perfect world, I'd like to say, Let's put channel 55 everywhere in the, in, across the globe, but that probably won't happen. Short of that, if we could get a device that could handle many, many technologies and make it cheap enough where you could drop it into every handset, the same way we do with a camera or with GPS, I think that would be a compelling mass market opportunity. And we have a chip at Qualcomm our universal broadcast modem. And already we have mixed in several of the Korean standards, the Japanese standards, the US standards, and now looking to mix in the Brazil standard as well, ISDB-TB for Brazil. And the opportunity there 
is then you can have just one device and you can actually receive TV in many regions, many parts of the world. Um, and with that 3G pipe linking you back, you can pay for it. So it's protective content coming down to the handset in a mass market way. So this is just one aspect of convergence, mobile TV, but I think it's a great opportunity and a step toward the digitization of Brazil. Thank you very much.